Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today I will tell a little bit problem that I had and how I fix it or what application that I install in order to make it better for me. So basically my parents call me and say my computer is not work or at least not work how it should be, can you come here and fix it? I have two options, I can go there in my parents house and fix it or I can do a remote connection and fix for my house. Of course, I will save time and money if I fix for my house. So then I start to look for different applications, have a lot in the market, but not necessarily that everyone work quite well. One of the applications that I use is Timveer, but they are limited using the free option. This reason that I start to look for any alternative that's open source and that I can self-host and I can have a control totally for this connection. And look for it, I find the application called Rust Desk. And this application, they promise that you're gonna have end-to-end -end encryption. So it means that your user and the other user is encrypted, so neither the server know what is going on. Also, this server will be self-host my computer. So I have a total control about it. I can open ports if I need. I can do all the management in my way, and I know that I control everything instead of give the option for any other company to change the policy and that control my data. So in this way, we're gonna show how you can install Rust Desktop. We're gonna explain a little bit more about this application, how they work, and that if this application is the right one for you, you can install and that you can start to use. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed then, Let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to install this application called Rust Desk, we need to understand if this application is the correct one for you. So in order to understand a little bit more, what we're gonna do is come here my screen and I will explain a little bit more about this application. This is the application for Rust Desk. And here they say that uh, do not download if it's not the correct domain. This is because a lot of people start to use any application for remote desktop to scan other people. So download only for the official website. Also, if someone asks your ID and your password, don't give because you don't know the person. Unless you really know the person, then it's a different history. But anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna self-host and we're gonna manage everything ourselves, so it's totally safe. And they say that it's a fast open source remote access and support software, and they say switch from TeamViewer, AnyDesk, and all those applications. Why switch it? Because all those applications, it's host for someone, and that they have control of it. In our case, we're gonna self-host, and that because we could use local in our network, would be really fast, no latency, nothing. If we go for another option that they're gonna explain in a second, then they can create a little bit of latency, but we're gonna explain why. First thing, we need to understand the page. So the page, they give a lot of uh, different views. You don't need to worry about it, but uh, you have option to connect to Windows, Linux, and continue on. Also, why you should self-host. One of the good things for your self-host, please, please, security, it's you control, it's your premise. If you don't want to expose those doors, it's all local your network. Let's say that you have a five, six computers there. They will not go, the traffic outside for the network will be all local. Also, the performance will be really fast because basically will be the performance of your network and will be reliable. Other thing is flexible, you customize and you can have a lot of different clients. You can have a lot of different applications that you can install. So if you come here for download, you can have an idea how many different uh, devices that you can install. One thing that's interesting, they give this information. You may be in scan. Please remember, don't install and don't give this information if you don't know the person. Anyway, uh, you can install this application in Windows, Button, Mac, Android, Flatpak, US and web, basically everything that you want to do. The problem that web, they will only gonna work if you have the premium option. Everything else, you don't need to have the premium option. 
why is a premium option? If I come here and come for pricing, for the free options, you need to install those applications, you can have everything there. But if you want to use a web browser or web console, you need to go for the Pro version. And this one costs $9.90 a month. And that's uh, if you need it, it's good. If you don't need, you don't need it. If you are in the price and have more and more information that you want to set up, you can go for different tiers. But in our case, we're going to show only to self-host and you're going to see how easy and how practical is to self-host yourself. Anyway, if you come here, we go to understand how this application works. Before you start to install, before you go to self-host, you need to see how it looks like this application. So if I come here, here it's the view. Really similar for TeamViewer, really similar for any desk. Basically, you have ID, your password. And this password change time by time. And here I already connect for my computer downstairs. So here, run upstairs and here it's my other computer. One good thing to have this, it's basically you can expand it and now you see this computer as should be another computer and you can use the same way that you was using your computer. Of course, some shortcuts will not work the way that I expect, but you can minimize, you can select different screens you can go for your keyboard, power and record, call and continue on. So basically you have a full control for the other computer. You can do everything that I want and everything itself host. In this case, my both computers is the same network, so they work really fast. I don't feel any latency. I feel that it looks like I'm using that computer. But anyway, if you like this idea and want to install this application, now we're gonna show how you can install. First of all, let's close this page. Let's minimize this because we're going to use it in a second and we come here in self-host. In self-host, one thing that you need to remember is if you're using local your network, you don't need to open any port, you don't need to do anything. But if you're using external, you need to open some ports. Let's say you use a VPS and you want to connect all the computers for that VPS and that's connected from VPS for another computer, you need to open some ports, otherwise they will not listen and you're not going to be able to connect it. We're going to understand a little bit more the ports when we go to install it, but basically you need to install 21115, 21116, 18 and pretty much this, 17, 19 as well. So basically you need to install for 15 until 19 and all those ports need to be open. If you're using a relay server, you need only those. If you use your properly desktop, you need those. So they will say basic installation. And one thing that's interesting, they give a lots of options to install. Let's say that you want to directly install your Synology NAS, they will give step by step for it. If you want to use uh, Windows, they will give step by step for it. But what we're going to do is install the Docker. In the Docker, they rephrase again. Please make sure that the doors is open because otherwise they will not be able to connect if they are external, they will not be able to locate the server. Anyway, to install, super simple, it's basically this Docker Compose. You can create a Docker Compose and that it, run it using SSH. In our case, we're going to copy it and we're going to use Portainer. If you open Portainer, first thing that you need to do is open your primary, go to stack and create a new stack. In my case, I already have this stack, so I'm not need to create again. I will come here and press desktop, edit, and here will be all my configurations. What I need to do, basically I paste it and I only need to define my volumes. If you're using Docker Compose, you don't need to define your volumes because they will create those volumes straight away in the same folder that you will run that's .compose.iml. But in our case, we need to create the absolute path and here what I create the absolute path. And principally, this one is really important you have the absolute path because we're gonna get our configuration key in this location. So once that you create those absolute path, you don't need to do anything, you can come and deploy the stack. Once that you deploy the stack, they will appear those two containers. These containers don't show any public port because you cannot access this application directly. You need to access using the server, background server. And to do it, you need to have those ports. As I told, local network, you don't need to do anything. External network, yes, you need to have those. So once that you configure and deploy the stack, we can 
see our key. But before we see our key, we need to understand what's the difference for the both connections that you can have using this application. So to do it, I come here and here I have a little bit diagram how it's work. Let's say that this server here will be my Rust desktop. And this server, it's installed in my service. So let's say that this service is called Rust desktop and this service is run in my server. This server could be a uh, Raspberry Pi, could be anything. As I show, needed to have Docker. As long as I have Docker, they will run and will work as I expect. So how it's work? This computer, they wanted to connect for this computer. They will not connect directly. They will go here and using the relay option, they will go here, look for the server and say, I need to connect them. I am a P123, I need to connect for the ID 122. Okay, 122 is this computer. So then they will say, come here and connect for this computer. If you can have a trackly connection, what it will mean? They will start to have a trackly connection. One computer will communicate directly for the other computer and use the hole punch in your firewall to make this, if your firewall permit. If your firewall not permit, then they will not communicate directly. They will need to communicate for your server and that's for your server, they will communicate for the other computer. This one, it's called relay mode. And this relay mode, it have an implication of speeds because instead of go directly and will be really fast, really reliable, they needed to stop to go directly, they needed to go for your service and that's go back for other computer, what's a great extra distance. Let's say that this computer is in Brazil, let's say that this service is Japan and this one is in UK. So in order to communicate it, they will need to go to Japan and that will need to go to Brazil. And that Brazil will need to go to Japan and go to UK. So if you look for this distance, will create a lot of latency. Instead of this, if they could go directly, they only go directly and that will be only that middle distance and you avoid a lot of latency and avoid a lot of tra unnecessary traffic. Once that you understand it, what we're gonna do, we go here in our Docker Compose where I install this application. What I have to, this one is empty and this one have all the configuration file. You need now to open the second one. Remember, this second one, it's termination as a pub. Try to load, uh, try to open id ad 25519 pub. If you look here, I have two, so let's open this one first and let's open the second one. So the first one is really big string. This one will not work because it's, let's say, your background key. And this one is the key that we want. So now I can copy this key and come here in my Rust desktop. This Rust desktop, you can run only application or it can install your computer. If you run only application, they will only run when you open this application, that will not be anything running once that you close. If you want to access any time, you can install it. Now we come here in settings and here in settings, we have a lot of different configurations, but what we need to do is network, we go to ID relay servers. And here I will put the IP or ID for my server, my ID for my relay server, and here that specific key that I just copy from here, pub ID. So what's gonna happen if I want to use external service? If you have a VPS, IP will not change, so you can put the IP for your VPS, or you can use any DNS provider, let's say dynamic DNS provider as a DuckDuck DNS, Cloudflare and other things, for you have access for your external IP address and with this you copy here and that will run. Of course, it will only run if you have those IDs configured. Anyway, I am using local in my network, so for me will be fine those. I put OK and you know that it's running because you say ready. And because it's red, it's running. And now you can come here and put an ID for other computers, in this case a red on and that you can access those computers. But my problem is I leave one time password. So if I try to access, I need to go downstairs and try to find my new password. How I can avoid it? It's simple, come here in settings, security, because I install my computer, I need to unlock it. And now 
I can create a permanent password. And this permanent password means that always will be that password. I can enable two-factor authentication. I can change IDs. I can define different IDs specific for my application. If I have my key that it's connect between the two devices and my ID, I can connect it anywhere and use the password only one time. I don't need to wait for that uh, dynamic password. So in this way, we arrive in the end of this video. I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And see you next time. Bye.